Hello everyone, uh, delighted to be joined by England and Exeter rugby player Jack Knoll. Um, to give you a bit of an insight into to the purpose of these meetings, we wanted to bridge the gap almost between the followers of both Nutrition X uh, and also the ambassadors that we're currently working with um, and, and use this as an opportunity really to find out a little bit more about them, um, give you an insight into, into their life, into their sporting background um, and, and like I say, just use this as an opportunity to to really get to know who we're working with. Um, we've got a great bunch of ambassadors on board. We're delighted with, with who we're working with. Um, so we feel as though it's right for you to, to know a little bit more about them. So firstly, to introduce Jack to the first of, uh, of this edition. So thank you for joining us. No worries at all, mate. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so just to kick start off, really, we've got a couple of questions that we've outlined as, as what we feel as though people would want to know about you, but more than happy to, to sort of see where this conversation goes and, and have a discussion. Me, exactly. Yeah. Let it let it free roll and, 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 so, and say where it is. But uh, to start with, give us a little bit of an insight. How's, how's the injury getting on? Uh, I'm not doing too badly, mate. Um, I would like to be back playing um, and be fit by now, if I'm honest. But um, that's kind of just the way I am. I think I can take off two weeks off any injury. But um, I'm, I'm I'm not too far away now. I think I had my operation 14 weeks ago now. Um, so it literally feels like you know half a season, whatever. But it's not it's not been too long. But no, I'm itching to get back. I've I've started running on the field and stuff. Um, but I'm almost at the last hurdle now, just before I get back into full training. Um, and obviously after full training is is obviously match stuff. So um, you know, I feel fit, I feel strong. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've just got a little bit more to, to work on. Yeah, and obviously with it being pivotal time with Six Nations, just missed out on, on obviously being involved with the injury. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, a, a big goal of mine was to try and be fit for for the start of Six Nations. But, you know, being realistic and after speaking of surgeons and stuff, it's because it's my foot, it's, uh, it's, it's one you can't rush and it's one you've, you've almost got to pay, you know, close attention to because at the end of the day, you know, we run on our feet, we do all sorts on our feet. Like I've kind of got to take this one steady. Um, but for me still, I, I still want to play a part in the Six Nations. So um, again, hopefully I can get a bit of game time in for Exeter um, and almost pick up where I uh, carried on from last season. So, you know, then hopefully I can get a bit of a, a bit of a call up maybe towards the end. But, um, you know, the first things first is I'm going to try and make myself fit, fit, fit and as strong as possible. Uh, to come back in a good place for for that, whether it's for Exeter or England. Yeah, no, makes sense. Uh, how 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 did it how did it come about? How did the injury occur? It's a bit of, like a really really freak freak incident to be honest. It was the last ten minutes against Toulouse um, in our semi final of the of the Heineken Cup. Um, like I said, freak in incident. I went to push off, um, so you can imagine your foot and your toe is on the floor, almost like in a, like a tiptoe position. And as I've gone to push off to almost power into contact, I've been hit from above at the exact same time. Um, and obviously something's got to give. Um, yeah. And unfortunately for me, it was my foot. <laughs> so I kind of ruptured all the ligaments that goes from, you know, around underneath my toe into my foot. Um, at first, I thought I'd snap my boot. Yeah. Because um, that's almost what it felt like. It felt like the bottom of my boot. Um, was under a lot of pressure, so it almost snapped because there's plastic underneath your underneath rub, uh, underneath football boots and rubber boots now. Yeah. So I looked across to the physio. I was a bit like, oh, I've broken my boot. Um, what what should I do? Can you strap it up for me? Uh, and I, as I hit the floor and I had a look at my boot, there was there was nothing wrong with my boot, and straight away they knew that it was probably my 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 tendons and my ligaments under my foot. So um, it was like I said, it was a bit of a freak one, but at the end of the day, it's kind of what we do, um, and those things happen, and you've just got to kind of get on with it. I think. Yeah, uh, from the mental side of things, how, how's it how's it been? Like you said at the start, then it's never nice to miss games, and and no one wants to be injured for any extended period of time. So how's it been in that sense, trying to trying to mentally prepare to get him back? Obviously, you've had the Six Nations as a good point to to focus on, but how do you find it in that sense? Yeah, I think I've 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 learned a lot over my time playing. I've been injured a lot. I've had quite a few injuries. This is my ninth operation now. Um, so I've gone through a few stages. I think what I really struggled with the most is the fact that uh, I did it in a semi-final of the Heineken Cup. Um, the next games we had coming up was a final of a Premiership and a final of a Heineken Cup. Um, oh, sorry, a semi-final of a Premiership, a final of a Premiership and a final of a Heineken Cup. So three massive games. And I was thinking, do you know what? We're like, I've played all season. We're right at this last hurdle now where the big games are happening. Um, and these are these are this these games are coming up of why we play rugby, um, and I've almost put myself out of out of selection now because I'm injured. So 
don't, well, the first week and say, don't get me wrong, I was it was pretty dark. I was like, that's it. I'm not going to... Rugby players go through the whole career not getting to any finals, not getting to a Heineken Cup final or Prem final. So I was a bit like, this could be my one chance to do it. And I've, I've only gone and got injured in the semi-final. But um, you know, after speaking with the physios and the surgeons uh, and our doctors and stuff, they're a bit like, the damage is done in your foot. If you can, if you can get through the pain of it uh, and grit your teeth a little bit, there's no reason why you can't play. Um, so we actually had a week off then, and in our semi-final, so I had two weeks to rehab it and try and make my foot as strong as I can. Obviously, I relied a lot on tape as well. Yeah. Um, but like to get through those two games uh, in the season, I was so relieved. One, we we obviously won them, which was was massive, and probably for me that was the highlight of my career so far. Um, but two, I could actually, you know, I was involved in that game uh, and I got through that rehab block and obviously the, the, the surgery was waiting for me after. So, um, you know, for me, I kind of hit that goal and achieved what I achieved. So obviously now is a bit of a race to get back to Six Nations and stuff. But, you know, I'm really happy that I was able to play those two games in the first place. Yeah, well, probably a difficult question here. And I'm more than likely asking you to choose between between either of your kids. But which, which one of those cup games was, was the better for you? Which one? Which... One. Uh, um, I think for me, what was a bit more special was was probably the Heineken Cup game. Um, we we won the Premiership before. Not saying it's taken anything away from it. Yeah. Um, but I think, like I said before, a lot of teams, a lot of players I know and have played with, have played their whole careers without even getting to a semi final of the Heineken Cup, let alone a final, and let alone winning a final. Yeah. Um, so obviously, with the amount of excuses we could have made during the year, obviously with COVID and no fans being there, uh, and you know the bit of a messed up season we had, you know to come through the other end of that and to obviously not let let that affect us and come through and win that game, um, yeah, for me that was definitely by far the, the best game I've been involved in and played in. Yeah, and you, you touched on it a little bit there in terms of COVID. Obviously, it's had a had a, a massive impact on on everyone. Obviously, worldwide. How, how have you found it personally? Obviously, with family life and and but then also with with rugby and and how, and how have the team adapted to sort of training methods or, or whatever it may be? I think I think personally, um, I was obviously lucky enough to obviously be working with you guys. I, I work very closely with Red Bull as well. Um, so I, I had a, a home gym. I was in the middle of making a home gym and then that kind of sped things along a bit with, with Red Bull. So I had a lot of stuff sent down. Um, and obviously it was summer. The sun was out. So, you know, there was a lot going on, but I tried to make a big positive out of it. You know, I spent a lot of time with my family, um, did a bit of training just, to, you know, in the gym. Um, so, you know, the first little bit was 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 fine. Like I got on with that, um, enjoyed it and enjoyed the fact we could actually come back. So for, from a team point of view, we all came back in, in pretty good shape. And I think you could tell that from our games when we were back, we, we, we seemed to be a lot better than other teams. We were winning all our games and obviously we went on to win those those, those two finals as well. Um, so I think we, we coped with it very well, but that was last season. I think this season is very, very different now. Um, there's a lot more rules in place. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have seen on the TV in past, there's no celebration scoring tries or anything. Yeah. Um, there's no handshakes after the game with some of your, your, your mates that you played against that game. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot more stuff that's coming in place now, which is which is difficult, you know. And we are very lucky to still be playing, um, and still be training. We're still doing our jobs, so you know we're one of the lucky ones. And obviously, with what's going on, but there are a few challenges that are in place. But I suppose, you know, the, the guys that are going to come out top are the guys that can deal with that um, and not really let that affect them, to be honest. Yeah, and obviously with, with everyone's in the same boat in terms of fans not being in the in the stadium, and, and and part of the reason obviously we wanted to do this is like I say bridge that gap for for fans to to still be connected with with players and obviously their favourite teams. And I'm, I'm presuming obviously that must have been hard in terms of going from from a a packed stadium to to no one there at all. Yeah, it was. Is 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 some some guys can get on with it, but you know for me I do really enjoy playing in front of crowds. It's kind of what why you do it when you're a kid. Um, and obviously to go from you know a packed out Sandy Park where we have you know thirteen fourteen thousand um, at home games you know to have that to then have no one is 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 a bit weird. Um, it's weird hearing you know, the opposition because you can hear everything they're saying. You can hear everything the coaches are saying up in the stand. Um, so it is it is strange, um, but we are very much looking forward to to everyone getting back in and hopefully you know hopefully very soon there will be fans back in you know because. It's not just only the fans that are in there, but obviously 
our families and stuff can't come as well. So you know, one of the main reasons I play is, is is for my family and to know they're in the stand watching is always you know very special. So you know it is tough and just I, I couldn't imagine what that Heineken Cup final last year would have been at Bristol if that was packed out with you know Chiefs fans in there. Yeah, um, and rugby fans in general in there because it would have been an amazing, amazing experience. But you know, hopefully we can get there, get there again um, with fans in, involved as well. Yeah, I mean, I remember texting you obviously before that game. There was there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of my mates who were Chiefs fans that were that were itching to be there, and and obviously I think it 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 sort of uh, it, it made it easier for them the fact that you guys obviously did go on and win. So you certainly made certainly made a couple of my mates very happy those those two evenings obviously after those finals. So yeah, yeah. I think everyone's in the same boat, aren't they? They <laughs> want to get back to to supporting and being in and and, and moving it forward that way, but. If we go right back to the start, so how, how did you how did you first get into rugby? What were your first sort of memories of, of playing, and at what sort of age were you when when it all started for you? Uh, I was actually I was, I was I was real young. I was four. Um, I joined the Penzance and Newland Pirates under fives. Um, yeah. if, if I'm honest, I hated it. Um, <laughs> I had a lot of I had a lot of energy when I was a kid. Um, so mum thought you know to try and you know target my energy and my frustration, I'll take you down to rugby. None of my family really played rugby. Uh, my old man's a fisherman, but, you know, it's kind of a big part of Cornwall, um, local rugby. So she took me down there to see if I wanted to, to join in and give it a go. I hated it, stood by her leg, uh, cried for the first month, refused to join in. Um, but, you know, it, it took me it took me a while to get in there, but I always wanted to go down there. I always wanted to be part of it. But then as soon as I started to get to know the, know the boys, I, you know, became really good friends with them. Um, that was it then. I kind of took off from there. Um, played all my all my mini mini and junior stuff till I was about sixteen at, at Penzance Newman Pirates, um, and then joined uh, Truro College, uh, where I, I picked up a contract of Exeter. Exeter yeah. put me on loan to Red Roof when I was sixteen. Um, then I actually moved to Exeter when I was eighteen. So, you know, it was a pretty pretty surreal roller coaster. But you know, the last ten years now have flown by for me. So um, yeah, but from when I was younger, it all started from the age of four down at my local rugby club. Yeah, and I'm just going to you, again. You touched on it basically with there with the Cornwall being such a big rugby sort of uh, rugby place, and, and obviously Nutrition X being based in Gloucester. Then it's a similar similar sort of uh, feeling here. And, and for me personally, I'm from a football background more so from from rugby. So it's for when I first moved to this sort of area, it was strange having that that feel because obviously football is is more more sort of dominant across the UK, I would say. But um, how was it? How was it in Cornwall growing up, with it being so rugby orientated? Yeah, I think you're complete opposite to to what you pretty much said there. I think, yeah. like you said, you you got a bit of a taste of it moving down to the southwest, down to Gloucester, um, but it's, it's it's even more so down there because we don't have any football teams really. We've got the old local teams dotted around yeah. uh, that play their local league, but no real serious team. I think probably the closest team to us is is maybe Plymouth, which is you know two hours up the road. Yeah. Um, so it was literally rugby, and I remember we had, we had teams like Red Roof, Launceston, um, which were the Cornish All Blacks. We had Mounts Bay, we had the Cornish Pirates. Um, so these were teams that were in high leagues. You know, the Pirates were in Championship, um, then National One, and a few dotted down between. But I, I suppose it wasn't the leagues that the, the the teams were in. It was more the amount of fans and the, the amount of support that each team had. Yeah. Um, I remember just as a kid going down to watch Mounts Bay. Uh, play their games you know you'd have two three thousand in the state in 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 the ground sometimes and it was you know it was surreal so you know that's kind of where I wanted to try and set my stage going going up uh, and growing up Uh, and obviously lucky enough now to you know move out of Cornwall but to move to Exeter which is a premiership side because we never we've never had a premiership side down here before the closest was Bath Bristol yeah Um, yeah but to have one so far down in the southwest now is is pretty cool and obviously helped me out very much yeah, and and then obviously England came calling. So how how did it? How how was it? How were your emotions on that first call up to England? Again, I was I, I was a kid. I was nineteen, twenty, I think. So yeah. you know, like now I look at you know nineteen, twenty year olds, and it's it's a bit different nowadays. Like I was playing for Exeter when I was eighteen, and um, but I suppose that's just kind of the 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 crop of the lads that I grew up with and played with, and we're kind of all still playing now. So it's a lot harder to. To break into those teams when you are younger, um, but it, the fact that I was young, I probably didn't think about it too much, which I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really thankful for. Because if I thought too much about it, I would have probably panicked and done stuff that I wouldn't normally do. Um, 
but the fact you are so young, you're naive, and I kind of just treated it as another game of rugby. Um, yeah. I'm still kind of doing that now, which is which is the best thing about it. Um, so maybe when I'm a bit older, I can have a little think about it. Um, but because I'm still involved and I'm still doing it, I think the best way is not to think about it too much and just kind of treat it as another game of rugby. But you know, obviously for me, it's, you know, to play for your country is. If I'm honest, it wasn't something I want set my set my goals at. I didn't start playing rugby to say I want to play for my country. Yeah. Um, because stuff like that doesn't really happen um, unless you're like really, really good and you're excelling it. So I was just like, do you know what? I want to have fun uh, yeah. and play with my mates. And if it happens, it happens. So, uh, you know, to actually get there and to have done that now is is pretty cool and, you know, pretty special to, to know I've got that. Yeah, certainly want to look back on and, and have the conversation with, you, with the kids when they're older and grandkids, isn't it? <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I've got, I've got two girls at the moment and like I said, I don't come from a big rugby family. Uh, <laughs> so, like, the most I get when I get home is, how's rugby going? Yeah, yeah, it's all right. And that's pretty much it. So, it, it's quite cool, to be honest. Yeah. So, out of all of the stadiums, you, you, you can you can pick one stadium to play at. What, what's been the best? What's been the most memorable for you? Um, I think probably playing in France was my first, obviously, England game. Um, yeah. In Paris, that was ninety odd thousand people and eighty eight thousand people in there. That that was my first proper like this is a big stadium moment. Um, so that's one I would always, I would always remember. I think always, when you play in Italy, you know the fans are always behind their team, the, the singing and the atmosphere is class. And obviously, you know Twickenham's up there as well. You know playing yeah. playing a big Wales Ireland game. You know England Wales England Ireland. I, I packed out Twickenham is it don't get much better than that either. So uh, you know anywhere there's a bit of atmosphere, I think it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah. Well, let's move on to a bit of nutrition and food based stuff. Obviously, I think anyone that that's following you on Instagram can see you're a bit of a fan of of a barbecue. What what's your favourite thing to to cook up on the grill? Oh man, I'm 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 into anything. Um, I actually really got into barbecuing in lockdown. So everyone's picked up new skills and stuff or new yeah. hobbies. Uh, mine was barbecue, and obviously the weather made me want to go outside a lot yeah um but i would i toyed around with gas barbecues or charcoal barbecues i was convinced for a charcoal barbecue i got a kamado and just the fact that it's the coal and it just it honestly changes the taste of any food for the better um so i'm i'm, I'm into my steaks i only really eat steak on a barbecue now but like anything really chicken thighs chicken wings um i cook most of the food out there now even in the winter um, I'm a big fan of a breakfast on a barbecue as well, which sounds right. pretty weird. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of like waffles and stuff, and I put them on the grill, uh, yeah. bacon, anything like that. Eggs is is, and when you're out there cooking, it kind of makes you feel a bit more, a bit more hungry about it as well. So yeah, so for for the for the nutrition next summer party, then we we know where we're heading. Hundred percent. I can make some protein pancakes. And <laughs> give me, give me a call. <laughs> yeah, perfect. We'll bring, we'll bring some stuff down with us. And we can get some stuff cooking. Um, so, how how important is food for you? Obviously, intake for 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 rugby. We're fortunate enough to be working, obviously, with with some top nutritionists and and obviously uh, Graham Close, who's obviously with the England setup as well. You, you know, and, and whatnot. It, we're, we're privileged to have him on board with us in, in what he's doing in capacity with his role. So, how important is it for you from a from a rugby perspective? Yeah, I, th I think it's massive. I think it's, it's it's actually probably one of the most important important things now, alongside you know recovery. Like before, it was all about training and all about playing, um, and as long as you're doing that well, you're okay. Yeah. Whereas, obviously, it's still massively about that. But what can actually make you better is your diet, your food, you know, your supplements you take. So, like you said, with Closey, and obviously we've worked very closely with him in England, um, and he changed our whole menu. He made it, you know, very. Uh, very much so. So it's an individual thing. So everyone's slightly different. So that end of it, like you can't just go props can't eat the same as what I eat, or the quantity or the amount. Some can eat more, some can eat less. Um, but I think it's very important. Like I said, it was massively important for recovery. Um, your mental state, I think, is big as well. Like you could have weeks and weeks of eating well, but at the end of the day, you need a bit of a cheat meal and you need to enjoy yourself because it can make you feel so much better. So. Like for me personally, I always leave that till after a game um, or after a hard session on a Saturday or something. That's when I'll kind of get that meal in. Um, but like, and it it can make you it makes you so much better as well. Do you know what I mean? Like in terms of recovery, it can make you go again the next day. Um, any little thing as well. For me, I'm not a big eater, um, so in terms of supplements and stuff like that, um, it's very much it's, it's so much easier just to bang a shake in when you when you can, especially having now two kids. 
Yeah. Um, but then there's obviously the other side of it as well. Like obviously for me, you, you, you guys know, uh, probably one of my favorite supplements is the collagen shots as well. Um, again, that's kind of recovery, you know, muscle recovery as well, but I have such bad tendons and ligaments. That's what I always seem to snap. You know, if yeah. you're banging these collagen shots in, it's only going to make you better as well. It's, it's sometimes only the little five, 10 percenters that, that make a massive difference. So, uh, you know, to have people like yourselves and, and closely and all working alongside us, it's, it's only going to make us better. And um, what, what would you say you go to meal, obviously working with closely sometimes, I'm, I'm presuming that that then uh, gets taken out of your hands, especially in camp before before a game. But if you're if you're picking a if you're picking a meal before a game, what, what are you normally going for? Um, I'm always a, so I always try and keep the same as what I can have at home, what I have away, because um, then you, it's very much it's fresh in your mind. You know what you're doing. Um, so I always go for chicken fajitas. Yeah. Um, I actually live next door to one of my uh, teammates, Jack Gendel, as well. Um, so he quite often comes over on a Friday night. We'll cook up about, I think, 15 chicken breasts between <laughs> between four between us two and our two partners. So yeah. They, they probably have about two fajitas each, whereas me and him are smashing in a good six or five or six. So, uh, yeah. you know, we always have a big meal the night before, and we always make it a bit of a a bit of a thing as well because. You know, the night before a game, the nerves can set in and stuff like that. You start thinking about the game, but, you know, to make it a bit more chilled, we always do something together. And it's the same very much with Roman Hotel. Um, there's always different options when you are away of England um, or if you're away of Exeter in a, in a, in a hotel. You know, there'll always be chicken fajitas on the menu. So um, that's something I always try and try and stick to and make it a bit of a tradition now. Yeah. You, you mentioned, obviously, the, the, the repair shots there as well. What, what sort of other supplements for, for people that may not necessarily have a an understanding of, of what supplements someone like yourself would need what what would you say your your sort of go-to is and, and and why why would you use them so for me i'm always uh i'm always at least minimum two shakes two shakes uh shakes a day um obviously we've got our nighttime stuff that we have i'd always have it with creatine and then we've just got our normal proteins as well that i'll have after um after training or or a gym session and stuff like that so they're kind of they're your given that you'd You'd always, you'd always have, most rugby players would always have that. The night, the nighttime shakes, the caseins and stuff like that. I'd have that because um, it helps me put, it helps me not put weight on, but keep my weight on. Yeah. Um, that's obviously for guys that don't know, it's like a slow, slow release protein. Um, and you lose a lot of weight during the night, which is a good thing for some people. But for me, I always, like I said, obviously need to keep my weight. Um, so that's like a slow releasing protein that I can use during the night. So they're my two definites. The repair shots, like I said. Not only for my muscles, but you know, for my ligaments and stuff like that, is, is obviously very good. Yeah, and then looking ahead, obviously, I had a fantastic career within rugby already. But but looking ahead, so retirement comes around, and what what what's then the future holding for for you at that point? Have you got any plans in place or? It's a tough one. Um, I've not got I've not got anything in place at the moment. Um, a big thing I want to do is move back down to Cornwall. Yeah. Um, I'd like to move back down to where I grew up just because the way of life down there is is something I've missed massively. Um, obviously, I've missed my summers down there. Our beaches down there are beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I'm really much, look, I'm very much so looking forward to moving back down there. Uh, in terms of my rugby stuff, I a lot of people say, do you want to go into, you know, punditry? Do you want to go into coaching? Um, but if I'm perfectly honest, if once I'm finished my rugby career, I don't think I could hang around if you get me. Yeah. Um, obviously, some people are desperate to be a coach, and that's what they love. <clears throat> but for me, to be so close to the game and so close to the players, but not have that enjoyment of being out on the field, because um, that's what I love the most is being out on the field and playing and winning. I yeah. don't think I'd get that same involvement, uh, same enjoyment uh, being a coach. So I, I kind of think once I'm once I'm done with rugby, I'm I'm done. Um, yeah. And I would love to try something else because you know at the end of the day, we're still going to be young. Um, hopefully I'll be late thirties, still playing. But um, you know, hopefully I'm touch with my body's in, in a good condition still. But I'd love to try something completely different uh, and almost start another life again. Yeah. Well, I mean, your pitch, your pitch for our products was pretty good, so I'm sure we can always open up something for you <laughs> if uh, if needs be. <laughs> I tell you, that's one thing I will be doing. I will be staying in the gym. Uh, yeah, and I, will, and I will be looking after my body, so I might have to take you up on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, what what sort of advice would you give to to with Nutrition X? Obviously, it's all about grassroots level as well as obviously looking after the the elite performers like yourself. So, what advice would you, I suppose, give yourself 
um, when when you were first starting out, or, or, or someone that was that was really looking to embark on a rugby career now? What what, what bit of advice would you give them? Um, I, I, I always say, and I, something I've always tried to live by as well. Um, if if you're not having fun, there's there's probably no point doing it. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? There's everyone's. I get asked so many times from people's parents, and oh, my son wants to be a professional rugby player like you guys. Like, what can I be doing to help him? What can what can he be doing? And I just think there's there's no point stressing about it. Like my my little brother's probably in the same position at the moment. He's coming up through. He would like to be a professional rugby player. Um, <clears throat> but you can't put pressure on on it. Like it might happen, it might not. But as long as you're having fun, as long as you're trying your hardest, um, that's all that matters. You know, there's no one, there's not many rugby players at the moment that aren't enjoying what they're doing. Um, because the main thing is, I know it's easy to say that we're playing rugby, we're getting paid for it. Of course, you're going to enjoy it. But it's 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 before that as well, like the grassroots stuff. Like I, I never enjoyed playing rugby, like I said, so I didn't do it until yeah. I started enjoying it and I started loving it. That's when I started playing, and that's the reason I played. I was never put, I never had any stress put on me from my parents or anything. It was just the fact that I love being with my best mates and I love playing rugby, and that was kind of just just the way it was. So I, I think as long as you're trying your hardest, you're giving your all, you're having fun. You, know, you, you you can't go you can't go wrong from that to be honest. Yeah, no, I think it's a, it's a sound bit of advice for anyone because, like you say, I think everyone everyone that's seen you play, everyone that knows a little bit about you, and, and hopefully, obviously, if people have watched this and, and they can have a bit of an insight, then that's some, certainly something they'll be able to take away from that. That unless you're enjoying it, that there is no point. Life's too short, so make the most of, of what you've got with doing it. So uh, I think that's that's a, that's a perfect way for us to to end this one. And and I think it was just from from myself and obviously for everyone that was watching a, a massive thank you. Obviously, like I said at the start for for jumping on board and, and giving us an insight into into a little bit more about yourself and um, and hopefully we can we can do this again soon at some point and uh, and I'm sure we'll definitely be holding you to the to the barbecue in the summer definitely mate we'll do we'll do another one on when I'm back fit and I'm playing again because it'd be a lot easier to talk about rugby then but uh yeah the, the barbecue is definitely up for we'll, we'll, we'll make a date and we'll, we'll get something sorted yeah perfect well I mean obviously don't want to preempt what's going to happen but um like you say if you if you manage to get into manage to get some involvement with the six nations and, and England do what we hope that whether you can I obviously can say that as an Englishman then, then we'll come <laughs> back on and do another one perfect mate no worries thanks very much cheers thanks Jack bye 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 Thank you.